All right, everyone, and just one day after Apple gave us a 26.2 public release for all the software, they just gave us iOS and iPadOS 26.3 beta 1. So without further ado, let's see exactly what's new with this because there's something that I never thought I would see. Let's talk about it. But now before we continue, if you do enjoy videos like this one where we talk all things Apple hardware and software, consider subscribing to the channel. But one final thing before we really dive in, since it is the holiday season, this is probably more than likely going to be the final beta update of the year. So we're going to be at least three to four weeks before we get the beta 2 update of 26.3. So if there is some sort of detrimental bug or performance issue that's going to be breaking some of these phones, iPads and computers, and you aren't comfortable with that possibility happening and then waiting a few weeks, I would consider holding off on this one unless you are okay with that possibility actually coming true. So again, normally it's about a two week beta update, but this time around it's gonna be at least three or four weeks. Do keep that in mind. But now let's talk about the first new update, which is Apple playing nice with Android. Well, all right, everyone, here we have my M4 iPad Pro running the brand new iPad OS 26.3 beta one. And in terms of build number, if we go into our photos, you can see here that it's about an eight gigabyte update. So give yourself at least 15 to 16 gigs of open storage in order to get this installed and installed correctly. And as I mentioned earlier, this should be the final beta update of the year. So if you aren't comfortable using this beta for the next three or four weeks, I would advise you not to update it. But if we go over here, go into our settings, go into our general, then go into the about, we can start to see the build number over here. So if we go into here, you can see that we're on 23D5089 lowercase e. So we'll probably have anywhere from three to five betas before we get to RC. But again, this should be coming out in January, maybe even the first week of February of 2026 for everybody to get this 26.3 update. And for those of you that aren't aware, a 0.3, so an odd number update, the 26.1, the 26.3, these are updates that are much more about performance improvements, bug squashing, making sure that everything's running as smoothly as possible. But there are a couple of things that came in the forefront that I think are warranted, or at least that people should know about. And they all are both going to be in the settings. So the first one is if we go into our general, and whenever you go to reset an iOS or iPadOS device, it'll ask you down here how you're gonna do it. So here it lets you know to reset and then erase all content and settings. But now there's this new option down here for transfer to Android. So funny enough, now Apple's playing nice with Google and with Android. I do think this has to do with a big partnership that's coming up next year with Gemini and Siri. And I think, you know, between this and then AirDrop not being supported by Google Pixels. And there's a lot of kind of synergies happening with iOS and, you know, Google and Android. But now if you click on here, you get this new option. So it says place your devices next to each other, place your Android device next to this iPad to get connected and begin the transfer process. Once you're connected, you can choose what you want to transfer, such as your photos, messages, notes, and more. So you can also have the transfer to your phone number, health data, device paired with Bluetooth, and protected items such as lock notes are not available to transfer. So do keep that in mind. And you get all this different stuff here. You press continue, or you can press the learn more button. And I'm curious to know where that takes you. If you press learn more, it gives you a little bit more information on how to do all this step by step. But at least now directly from the settings menu, we're able to get that process started. And as the betas kind of go on, we'll test it. I do have a Samsung Fold that I maybe could test this with, but we'll see exactly what that looks like in the future video. And the next one's also going to be in your settings, but it's going to be all about notifications. So if I X out of this one, let's cancel the transfer. Let's just press continue here and get out of there. But if we go down to our notifications, we have a new option in here, which is going to be notification forwarding. As of right now, there's nothing in this settings menu. As you can see here, it just says forward notifications. So notifications can be forwarded to one accessory at a time. Notifications will not appear on Apple Watch while notification forwarding is turned on. So maybe you have an external third party piece of hardware that allows you to get these notifications somewhere else. So it's not on your wrist at all times, or it's not on your phone or your iPad. You can now have notification forwarding, very similar to text and call forwarding. So that's a brand new feature in 26.3. But those are the only real kind of noticeable features that were even worth kind of mentioning with this 26.3 update in terms of stability and improvements to performance. I mean, it seems fine. It feels, it feels the same as it did with 26.2 for the day that we had it. One thing that people keep bringing up is that the dark mode icon is now in the brightness section, but I believe it was there before, but some people are saying that it wasn't there. So maybe depending on what your situation is, now you can actually have access to it. But outside of that, everything is pretty much the same. And then in terms of battery life, if we go into our settings, I do like to kind of finish this off with some battery life to see what this looks like. Cause again, I do use my iPad Pro pretty intensely getting about three hours and nine minutes of screen on time with 60% battery taken up. 
On this day right here, we had eight hours and eight minutes, but we used about 150% of battery because we charged it a good amount. So the list goes on here, 70% battery used, we got about five hours. So on this day, we probably could have gotten seven hours of screen on time when I was using it intensely. And you can see the type of applications I'm using. You know, we have LumaFusion, Orion, Monitor Plus, voice memos, and of course, a little bit of streaming. But so those are all the things that came with iOS and iPadOS 26.3 beta one. Let me know in the comment down below if you guys are updated or if you're holding out for the public version. So that will just about do it for this video, everybody. As you saw, there aren't too many big differences, if at all, just a couple added features. And if people aren't aware, usually the even number Number updates so the 26.2 the 26.4 updates those will be the ones that will give us some real substantial features and the 0 0.1 0 0.3 and 0.5 are normally the features that are just bug improvements and little things in the background to make your day-to-day -day life a little bit easier so again since this is an odd number update with 26.3 nothing too crazy and we will be testing out those features as the new betas do come about but that's everything that we got with 26.3 beta 1 on iOS and iPadOS, everybody. If you guys did enjoy this video, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end of this video. And if you guys want to watch more videos like this one, check out one of these videos right here. Until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everyone.